Tier three. Hit me. What's Mikael Bridges doing in tier three? No, he, seriously. Okay. No, no, seriously. Like, this is, I know he put up big numbers when he got traded to Brooklyn. I know everybody this and that. The team still finished 12, uh, 12 and 15 in the games that he played in Brooklyn when once he got traded there. Got swept in the playoffs. Like, it's like, what are we, like, come on, man. Like, were we really like. Okay, so he was the best 3 and D player in the league. And then he gets traded and he's in a, it's only 27 games. He's in a, he's in a primary role. Uh, he's 60% true shooting, 30% uh, usage. Do you know how many players in the three point era have ever done that over a season? And I'm not saying he did it over a season. He did it over a third of a season. Well, there's only 25 guys who's ever done that over the 30 some years we've had, we've had the three pointer. So, um, admittedly i've kind may have kind of been looking for a reason to, for him to you know the line between tier three and tier four has always sort of been the role player barrier for me but his ability to get shots i mean he was already improving that in phoenix his ability to get his own shot and then yeah maybe the team it didn't always work for the team but he i, well, I don't know what else he could have done I, am i getting a little ahead of myself with him because he's a player that i've always kind of been in the tank for possibly but uh, more than possibly stop yeah, it more than like, possibly you're human it's okay yeah it's okay if you uh, this that but that one that one shocked me because to me this is jeremy grant 2.0 he's better player than jeremy grant but same concept his best role on a team and you talked about this in in the uh in the tears about like hey like his best role is going to be on a championship team, a three and D guy who can put stuff, put it on the floor, maybe be a third option at most and things like that. I think we, we saw Jeremy Grant put massive numbers up in the, with the Pistons. And I don't think you gave him as much love in the tears when he was doing that with the Pistons. I don't remember. I, I mean, I, I mean, Grant, I was, I was impressed that Grant was able to go from a sort of a fourth option in Denver to a first or second option in Detroit and be at roughly league average efficiency. Uh, Bridges has always been a very efficient player. And the fact that, yeah, he's not going to keep shooting the way from three that he did when is in his time in, in Brooklyn, but the fact that he was able to take on the huge role and be super efficient. That's the part that's different. I think between uh, Grant and Bridges. Now, if that doesn't continue and he's a, you know, a league average, if he has a you know huge usage league average efficiency next year, you'll see him back down in tier four, but if he's able to, you know, guys who can, guys who can score efficiently on high usage, that is the most valuable skill in the NBA. Yeah. But we, we've seen guys get hot for 30 games. Yeah. We've seen guys get hot for 40 games. Like it's, it's like, you know, what would be an interesting number to go look at is go look at that. What you're telling me about having a 60% true shooting percentage on that type of usage in 20 or 30 game segments and let's see how often that's happened and then go from there in that sense we we both know listen the number is going to probably go down just because it's a crazy number just by sure of 82 games assuming health and everything you know in that sense but it's like you know i just think we get too hyped off of what we saw there and then it's again it's just a little bit frustrating for me seth because in some tiers for some guys winning matters but for other guys it doesn't like there's well, an element, uh, there's an element of that where it's a, it's, it's not, this is, this is my problem with it. He, to me, should be a tier four, a guy like all the way. He's not, he's not, you, you got to prove it to make it to tier three. Fair enough. 